sergeants, please begin your recordings. Um, and hold on here. One moment, please. Mr. Lugo, you may begin with your uh, opening statement. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's remote New York City Council hearing of the Committee on Governmental Operations. At this time, would all panelists please turn on their video. To minimize disruption, please place electronic devices to vibrate or silent. If you wish to submit testimony, you may do so at testimony at council.nyc.gov. Again, that's testimony at council.nyc.gov. Thank you for your cooperation. We are ready to begin. Miguel in. Good afternoon. I am Council Member Fernando Cabrera, Chair to the Committee on Governmental Operation. I want to start off by thanking the members of the committee, uh, committee joining us today. Council Members Powell, Kalos, Combo, Perkins, Marcel, and Yeager. Today, the committee will be hearing a very important resolution on voting rights, a resolution sponsored by Majority Leader Lori Combo calls upon Congress to pass and the president to sign the Voting Rights Amendment Act of 2019 of the VRAA, which will revise and modernize portions of the Voting Rights Act of 1965 struck down in the Supreme Court decision Shelby County versus Holder. In the 2013 Supreme Court decision Shelby County versus Holder, the, the court invalidated certain portions of the Voting Rights Act. Currently, this, the court struck down the pre-clearance pre requirements, a mechanism that had required federal intervention when jurisdictions with a history of discriminatory and unfair voting practices tended to make changes to their voting procedures. This ruling gutted a major component of the Voting Rights Act, even though attempts to suppress minority voting continue across the nation. Since this unfortunate, unfortunate decision, at least 23 states have enacted new restricted voting laws, including strict ID requirements and proof of citizenship. In February 20, uh, 2019, Representative Terry Sewell from Alabama's 7th District introduced the Voting Rights Amendment Act of 2019. The bill will revise and modernize portion of the Voting Rights Act that was struck down in Shelby County. Among other things, the Voting Rights Advancement Act will establish new criteria for invoking pre-clearance requirements based on, on a finding of repeated voting rights violations over the past 25 years, specified practices that have historically been used to discriminate against voters that will require pre-clearance and increase transparency by requiring, requiring reasonable notice of any jurisdiction's chances to voting procedures regardless of whether they require pre-clearance. This resolution is especially important today because its passage will honor the legacy of a great man, the late Congressman John Lewis, passed away on July 17. John Lewis was a bastion of the civil rights movement who repeatedly risked his life in his nonviolent fight for civil rights, in, in particular voting rights. He was there on that bridge in Selma on March 7th, 1965, where he was gassed and beaten with an inch of his life by those who refused to honor the fundamental rights granted to all Americans in the Constitution, he refused to give up and help secure the passage of the Voting Rights Act months later, only to see one of its key provisions gutted by the Supreme Court in, 19, in, in 2013. He was a proud co-sponsor, strident supporter of the Voting Rights Advancement Act. In passing, it will honor his legacy and ensure voting rights are protected for all Americans. I want to thank our majority leader, Council Member Lori Combo, for her leadership on this issue. 
in carrying this resolution. I want to thank our committee staff, CJ Murray, Emily Ford Jones, Elizabeth Kwong, Sebastian Bachi, for the work on this. And also want to thank my own legislative director, Claire McLevain. I would like not to invite Majority Leader Combo, sponsor of the pre-consider resolution to give a statement. Council member, Majority Leader. Thank you so much, Chair Cabrera. Thank you so much for your leadership and for having this hearing at this very critical time in our nation's history. I thank you and all of the committee members who are here today to make sure that we continue to make sure that everyone in our country has the right to vote. The future of this entire country will be shaped throughout the 2020 election cycle and beyond. As we observed in this year's democratic primary cycle, it is critical that the right to vote, which our ancestors labored, blood, sweat, and tears for, is respected across federal, state, and local elections. The June 2013 Supreme Court decision in Shelby County v. Holder substantially weakened our right to vote at a time when voter suppression is still prevalent, most especially in black and brown communities. Since then, approximately half of our 50 states have tried to suppress the right to vote through a variety of mechanisms made available to them via the Shelby County decision. Some of these include strict voter ID registration, mm -hmm. proof of citizenship, purging voter rolls, reducing polling locations, and decreasing options for early voting. We've seen all across this nation where people have waited for hours and hours and hours. Many of them are seniors, those individuals who find it very difficult to wait online for hours at a time only to find out when they get the opportunity to vote that they have been not given that opportunity to do so. This resolution calls upon Congress to pass and the president to sign the Voting Rights Advancement Act of 2019. Esteemed civil rights icon, the late great John R. Lewis was a co-sponsor and staunch advocate for this legislation. It was my honor to be able to have an opportunity to meet with him, to talk with him, to learn from him, and to understand the atrocities that our ancestors very clearly experienced on that Edmund Pettus Bridge. It is symbolic of the atrocities that people of color have faced all across this nation when attempting to exercise their right to vote. And it is for them that we continue to fight to push forward this very critical resolution at this time. We owe it to his memory to carry the torch in codifying civil rights protections for all, not just a privileged few. Now more than ever, we need the federal government to pass the Voting Rights Advancement Act. I want to thank our speaker, Corey Johnson, for his leadership, our committee chair, Fernando Cabrera, my legislative uh, director, Jason Herr, my communications director, Alicia Mercedes, and my entire staff who have worked so incredibly hard to bring us to this moment. And you have already thanked so many of the people that have worked behind the scenes, um, in front of the scenes, to make sure that we pass the Voting Rights Advancement Act today. Thank you so much, Chair Cabrera. Thank you so much, so much Majority Leader Conval. Uh, thank you for that opening uh, statement on uh, your resolution. Uh, I appreciate your leadership. You're always in the forefront of issues that really, really matter, especially when it, uh, when it comes to fairness. That's what we're talking about here, fairness, uh, especially doing a, the, one of those sacred things that we have uh, that we need to preserve. Uh, I will now turn it over to our moderator, committee counsel, CJ Murray, to go over some of the procedure items. Thank you, Chair Cabrera. I am CJ Murray, Counsel to the Governmental Operations Committee of the New York City Council. We will now turn to public testimony. I'd like to remind everyone that unlike our typical council hearings, we will be calling on individuals one by one to testify. Panelists, please note that you will be on mute until you are called on to testify. 
at which point you will be unmuted by the host. I will be calling on panelists to testify, so please listen for your name to be called. Council members who have questions for a particular panelist should use the Zoom raise hand function, and I will call on you after the panelist has completed their testimony. Council members will be put on a five minute timer for their questions. All hearing participants should submit written testimony to testimony at council.nyc.gov. I would now like to welcome Susan Lerner to testify, followed by Perry Grossman. Susan, you may begin when ready. Thank you very much, CJ. I'm Susan Lerner. I'm the Executive Director of Common Cause New York. Uh, Common Cause is a national organization which fights for a vibrant democracy uh, and strengthening all of our rights. Voting rights are one of our primary uh, issues of concern. And we have been strong supporters of all of the amendments to the Voting Rights Act and of course, at the national level strongly urge Congress to pass the Voting Rights Advancement Act, now properly called the John Lewis Advancement Act. I wanna thank the um, committee chair uh, for inviting me uh, and for the resolution sponsor to, for introducing the resolution. Uh, this resolution I think is important because one has to remember that New York City was one of the jurisdictions that was covered by pre-clearance prior to the Shelby County decision. Uh, and having New York City raise its voice uh, and add to the chorus calling for the passage of the Voting Rights Advancement Act, I think is significant and has important positive ramifications both for voting rights here in New York City, but for voting rights across the country. As has been mentioned, the Shelby County decision, which we at Common Cause have recognized as mistaken from the beginning, had a serious and almost immediate impact on voting rights across the country. Um, it seemed as if it were only a matter of minutes uh, before jurisdictions uh, picked up voter suppression measures, which had been previously rejected under preclearance and rammed them through. Uh, as has been previously mentioned by the resolution sponsor, numerous states uh, have taken voter suppression actions. And what we see across the country is not only voters of color, but also elderly voters and young voters who are significantly impacted by rapacious voter suppression efforts that no longer have to pass muster through a preclearance process. The VRAA's proposed preclearance satisfies the concerns of the Supreme Court and does contemporize the process, unhooking it from a limited number of jurisdictions that historically prior to 1965 and prior to the uh, 1980s uh, amendment engaged in voter suppression. This bill, if passed by Congress and signed by the president, would make preclearance a national process for any jurisdiction which is engaged in voter suppression within a 25 year contemporary look back period. Um, this uh, change would significantly expand the preclearance and do a lot to protect voters from the sort of suppression that we are seeing across the country relentlessly applied. There are other measures uh, within the Voting Rights Advancement Act, which are also salutary, but I think the primary one is preclearance. And uh, we are delighted uh, to see this resolution and we urge the committee uh, to pass it through to the body as a whole. And we urge the council as a whole to add their very strong and singular voice to the call to Congress to pass the John Lewis uh, Voting Rights Advancement Act. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Unless there are any questions from the members, we'll move to the next panelist. Seeing no hands raised, I would now like to welcome Perry Grossman to testify. Perry, you may begin when ready. Thank you so much, Mr. Murray. Uh, thank you, Chair Cabrera. Thank you, Majority Leader Cumbo, and to the uh, other members of the committee. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here and be able to speak with you today. Um, the resolution is, of course, a, a good and worthy uh, resolution. The VRAA 
for all of the reasons that my dear friend, Ms. Lerner, just uh, provided is an excellent resolution, uh, is an excellent bill. Um, it's important to recognize just how important preclearance is. Um, it is the crown jewel. It is the most effective civil rights law in the history of the United States with no close second. Um, what it does, for those of you who might not be as familiar with it, is it flips the burden of proving discrimination from plaintiffs, from voters, from minority voters who are being suppressed onto the jurisdictions that would engage in discrimination to have them justify changes to their election law to show that they would not in fact make minorities worse off. The preclearance provision of the Voting Rights Act was designed to work in tandem with section two of the Voting Rights Act, which is the affirmative provision that allows minority voters to sue for relief to strike down old practices. So section two is the sword by which we cut through, you know, centuries of discrimination and preclearance is the shield by which we preserve those gains and make sure that jurisdictions cannot backslide. So it's certainly uh, after years of, of, of fighting to bring down uh, important and, and, and really strict discriminatory laws, uh, it was really disappointing immediately after the Shelby County decision. When I say immediately, I'm talking about hours to see jurisdictions like North Carolina, Texas, Alabama, reinstitute um, changes to their election laws like strict voter ID provisions, like rollbacks of early voting, uh, immediately reinstitute those in a way obviously intended to discriminate against minority voters. So preclearance was really holding an awful lot at bay. I don't claim to have been very close to John Lewis, although certainly Congressman Lewis would make anybody feel like a very good friend because he was such a warm and pleasant human being. Um, someone really committed to making everybody feel included and welcome in America to uh, never feeling the kind of discrimination that he bore in the most um, awful physical way. Um, but I did have the privilege um, of meeting him on a number of occasions. And, and the most interesting, I think, is that he and I actually sat near each other uh, at the Shelby County oral argument. And we spoke in the rotunda at the Supreme Court afterwards. And this is moments after uh, the late Justice Antonin Scalia had declared the Voting Rights Act a racial entitlement. Um, few things could infuriate John Lewis more than calling the Voting Rights Act a, a, a racial entitlement, given the fact that nothing was entitled about the Voting Rights Act. It was the product of the most hard fought advocacy uh, known to man a hundred years of discrimination after the 15th Amendment passed in, uh, in 1870, attacks on voters, all kinds of discriminatory laws. Uh, it was certainly not a racial entitlement. It was absolutely the product of uh, the most dedicated uh, and sacrificial advocacy I can imagine. And so restoring the Voting Rights Act is a tribute not only to Congressman Lewis, but Congressman Lewis would be the first to point to everybody in that struggle with him and everybody who struggles today and the importance of, of uh, making sure that those struggles were certainly not in vain and are able to produce for future generations a more inclusive and effective democracy, certainly for black Americans, but also for other people of color as well. We have a long history of discrimination in New York, not only um, against black Americans in voting, but against um, Latinx Americans as well. And so uh, certainly I urge passage of the resolution. I think that it's important to show that, that we here in New York who are subject to preclearance in, in three counties still support it because it's an excellent measure. Um, but above and beyond supporting the resolution, I urge, I urge this body and I urge everybody in attendance to think about what can we do better to serve voting rights in New York? because we don't do a very good job here. Um, we have some of historically the lowest turnout and lowest registration rates. We have big gaps in between white registration rates um, and white turnout rates and minority turnout rates and registration rates. There's a lot we can do to, to, to start to get at that. So um, I don't wanna go too far outside the scope of things, but I would suggest that uh, the city council really dedicate itself to investing in those ways that New York City can be an active proponent of a more inclusive democracy. Certainly we've seen uh, efforts in the past to do that, but there's even more we can do, uh, including for this
this upcoming November election. And I hope you'll take the opportunity to do it. Uh, I thank you all again so much uh, for the opportunity to be here. It really is a pleasure. Um, please pass the resolution. Thank you, Mr. Grossman. Unless there are any questions from the members, we'll move on. I see no hands raised. So at this time, if your name has not been called and you wish to testify, please raise your hand using the Zoom raise hand function. Seeing no hands raised, I will now turn it over to Chair Cabrera for closing remarks. Oh, excuse me. Uh, I see Council Member Ku has his hand raised. Council Member Ku, you may begin. Hi, everyone. I'm Councilman Ku. Today, we are voting on my legislation, Intro 1091A, which will require the city to create a stretchable and machine readable compilation. Uh, Councilman Ku, yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, that's when we get to the vote. Uh, so right now, we're just hearing the reso. Uh, oh. We'll be closing and then we'll be coming back for the vote. Oh, thank okay. Yeah, so yeah. Thank I'm you, sorry. Thank you yeah. so much just, for your yeah. eagerness. I love that yeah. when I talk <laughs> about eager for his for his bill. Thank you. So Chair Cabrera, please go ahead with the closing remarks. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I want to thank uh, first of all the panelists. Uh, thank you for your insight. Thank you for your knowledge. And uh, let me just say uh, right up front, I welcome uh, any next steps that we could take forward. Looking forward to meeting with you. Uh, if you have next steps on how we could do this better, uh, how we could have a higher level of engagement, voting engagement in the city, which uh, to be honest, which is very low, even though we have seen some improvement, but we could do so much better. So. Uh, looking forward to having that level of discussion. And I want to thank uh, the majority leader, uh, Tombo, uh, for, you know, we often say for your leadership, but leadership is all about influence and impact. And everything rises is based on, um, on leadership or fall based on leadership. So thank you for bringing this uh, up front uh, and, and just the perfect timing with that. And so with that, um, let me uh, bring it to, uh, to a close right now, today's hearing, and then we'll be coming back uh, for a vote.